welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen, to episode three in the moving into or using Pop! OS. So in the last episode, I talked about getting everything up and ready to install different types of applications. And uh, two of those were FlatHub and Snap packages. So right out the gate here, I am just gonna start installing some of the software that I use and, uh, and I guess throw some recommendations out there along the way. So Pop! OS 19.10 has got plenty of great features on it. Jump back to the first episode in the series if you wanna learn more about that. If you wanna learn more about how to enable Flatpak, FlatHub repository, Snap packages and app image support on Pop! OS. Check out episode two. And this episode is just going to really tidy up some loose ends. And uh, you'll also notice I'm using a slightly different format. In this video, what I'm doing is I've just gone ahead and recorded a bunch of screen recording and, uh, and then I am just talking over the top of it. So let's get up to speed here with what's going on here in the video. So first of all, I'm going to go out and install GNOME Tweaks. Uh, Gnome Tweaks is a fantastic little tool just to be able to tweak the Gnome setup uh, to what suits you. Then once that is installed, you'll want to go to extensions.gnome.org. Now again, this series is kind of trending a bit of a balance between tutorial and just between like, here's how I set up my system. So if I'm moving really quick, that's why. It's not really to teach you how to do these things, it's more showing you how I would do it. You can slow it down and check it out for yourself if you want. Um, so. Then once you're at extensions.gnome.org, you'll want to enable the GNOME extension up in the Firefox browser. And then once you've done that, that'll allow Firefox to communicate with your GNOME desktop and be able to add different extensions there. So as you'll notice, I'm opening up di different extensions in the tabs uh, next to it. And then you simply toggle the on switch and it'll ask if you want to install it to your GNOME desktop environment, which I think is pretty handy. So then once you're back in GNOME Tweaks, you'll then enable those different extensions using GNOME Tweaks. And you'll notice that I'm using the uh, dash to dock extension. I'm gonna shrink down the icon set so that they're not as large and it's not taking up as much space on the side of my desktop there. And, uh, and then I'll also enable the extend to make the dock a panel, kind of like how it is in Ubuntu out of the box. And then I've kind of enabled the slim mode as well. So now you'll see it takes up very little room on the side of my desktop, which is just the way I like it. So uh, GIMP has finished installing as a flat pack and I'm gonna add some of my favorite apps to the launcher here in just a moment. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna install the ICE uh, cloud app manager from the Peppermint OS team. So you go to HTTPS uh, launchpad.net forward slash tilde uh, Peppermint OS go to the Peppermint 10 release. And basically what we're doing is we're just jumping into their PPA and uh, selecting the ICE package. Now uh, ICE basically is a, a handy little tool that the Peppermint OS team came up with to kind of take away a lot of the web browser Chrome around different web apps, containerize them a little bit to, and put them in the launcher so that you can very easily add cloud services, uh, I guess in a very minimal window. Uh, and they kind of look a little bit more like native applications that way. So you simply download that .deb file. It'll pull in whatever dependencies you need using Eddy, which is fantastic. Now I'm just going through and adding a bunch of apps to my uh, sidebar you know, while I'm waiting for that to happen. Um, just some of the apps that I installed in episode two and, uh, and some of the apps that I installed in this episode. And now I'm also launching the Snap Store, which I also uh, downloaded and installed in the last episode. But you'll notice that I didn't actually demo it because it wasn't done by the time I finished recording the video. So now I'm just gonna go through and add some Snap packages from this Snap Store, including Spotify, Mini Diary, which is a fantastic little journaling app that can import from day one and, and other popular journaling apps, and uh, Chromium Web Browser, and uh, a few other little bits and pieces. Um, a few of the necessary evils that we need in this world to survive. Simple Note, fantastic, simple note-taking app that syncs across multiple platforms, which is fantastic. And, uh, and the other thing that I'm gonna do later on in this episode is just demo the difference between a Snap app and a, and a natively installed app, uh, specifically Firefox and Chromium, um, because I know a lot of people complain about the startup times of Snap apps. So we'll get back to that. Okay, so uh, I'm jumping back into the GNOME extensions just to enable uh, minimizing on click. So when I click on an icon in the launcher, uh, I want to if the if the app is already launched, I want it to minimize when I click on that app. 
uh, as opposed to uh, just cycling through the windows that might be open. Next thing I'm doing is just scaling up the text a little bit. I've got a 15 inch screen and a 1080p display, so making the text a bit bigger is very helpful for me. And, uh, and then ICE is all finished uh, installing and we can create some cloud apps. So I've uh, simply plugged in www.canva.com, which is a very popular uh, graphics design slash, uh, I don't know, it's like a tool that you can use to create uh, print media or social media graphics. Uh, and it's very simple to use. I use it all the time. I think it's fantastic. And uh, simply by putting in the URL, giving it a name, and then telling which category I want the app to be in, you can now see I can run Canva like it was kind of a native app instead of having all of the web browser kerfuffle around the frame. As you can see, when it's maximized out, it's basically all app, which uh, which I think is really cool. So it's just one of those little tools that I really love that, pe that, that the Peppermint team do. So I bring it with me in, w in most distributions that I use. I do the same for Word Online. So again, you just grab the URL from a normal web browsing session. So in this case, office.live.com slash start slash word, I believe it is. And, uh, and then the same thing happens. You've now got, once you sign into your account, you've got a, a word web app uh, just kind of sitting there in your system ready to launch with the super key and uh, and word which I think is fantastic and then of course you can remove those little containered web apps if you like uh, so yeah um, apart from adding a few more bits and pieces onto the uh, favorites bar that's really all there is to this um, again this was like a really short wrap-up episode to this because honestly this is basically what I would do if I was trying to uh, if I was trying to uh, run Pop, Pop OS for myself. Okay, so real quick, you can see the difference in speed between native uh, web browser and a Snap app, but there's really actually not a whole lot. First launch, um, even though this video is sped up, first launch for a Snap app is still a bit slow, depending on the app. Simple note there was pretty tardy, but you'll notice that the second time around, it's actually pretty quick. Um, but yeah, subsequent launches after that first launch with Snap, I'm finding is pretty minimal on, uh, on modern hardware these days. And uh, yeah, so I don't really have any complaints about Snap apps uh, in general these days. Uh, so the last thing that I'm going to install that uh, is necessary for my workflow on a daily basis is uh, OBS. And I'm doing it a different way just to show you the terminal way that you would uh, search for and install an application. So in my case, I'm looking for OBS Studio. It's the top one on the list and it doesn't actually show me what the entire name is. So I'm kind of left guessing here, which is a little bit of uh, a little bit of a bug or something that they probably should sort out if they can. Uh, but Flatpak install OBS project studio, give it a few yeses and uh, it will go out and install the uh, it'll go out and install the Flatpak version of OBS studio. And that I think is the final piece in the puzzle when it comes to getting this system ready for my normal production use. Uh, I've got GNOME extensions pretty much sitting the way that I want, not that I was using that many to begin with, but everything is integrated nicely, online accounts, syncing calendars, email, uh, the different, uh, uh, the different web apps that I use on a regular basis, snap packages, flat pack um, packages, universal app images, all of that fun stuff and goodies and uh and we've got some the ability to install some games on here as well we'll definitely be trying to get the second part of the ubuntu 19.10 review uh happening here very very soon so this is uh this is basically what it looks like ladies and gents so uh yeah that'll be all from me thank you so much for watching and uh, i will see you all in the next very next video peace out ladies and gentlemen